this is going to be really interesting because we're going to talk about a happy life. So you should stay tuned. You're going to love this. I want to introduce Onyeka Obiacha. Yeah. How'd I do? Yeah. Oh, Oni for short. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Michelle Patel. Got it. You are the CEO. You are the COO of a happy life. All right. First things first. Explain to me a happy life. How did you two come together and start a happy life? Okay. Well, our story really starts in 2010. Um, when I was a sophomore in college, undergrad, and I decided I was kind of getting a little bored with life uh, here stateside. Already side. you're so bored? <laughs> exactly, you're you know. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I didn't know it at the time, but I guess I had an entrepreneur's brain. Uh -huh. um, you know, always try to do something crazy, you know, out of the box. Did you grow up in a household where there were entrepreneurs? Yeah, my dad is, um, you know, a small business owner and my mom is a caterer. Okay. Her own business. So small business. Yep. All right, so and your family entrepreneurs as well? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, um, my mom and my dad are both in the health field. Okay. Um, and I really always grew up not really knowing what I wanted to do, and I really just wanted to do a little bit of everything, um, whether it was health or wellness or anything really entrepreneurial, but not in a way that, but very socially minded as well. Um, and I just always had that dream. And I think one thing that's interesting about both Vishal and I is that when I was young, I spent some time in Nigeria where my family's from. When Vishal was young, he spent some time in India where his family's from. Though you were both born in Connecticut. Yes. Born in, you yeah. got to go back to the native land. Yes. Exactly. And what did you learn there? Uh, I think we both came out with a deeper understanding of the world around us um, and really the harshness of the cycles of poverty that people can be entrapped in. Um, and it's funny because we were both very young when we did it, so it definitely had a big effect in our future. But you didn't know each other then? No. We did not know each other Okay, then. so when did you meet and form this thing called A Happy Life? Um, <clears throat> so back to 2010. Yeah, I'm when traveling. you were bored. And when I was bored, <laughs> I, was, I decided I was going to do some volunteer work in Tanzania. Um, I went out there. Fell in love with the place immediately, the people, the culture, the food, everything, the environment, one of the most beautiful places in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I got to know some farmers out there who happened to grow coffee. Wasn't even much of a coffee drinker back then, um, but I fell in love with it as well. Um, and I kept going back. And in 2012, when I graduated from Boston University. Which is just two years ago. Which is, yeah, just yeah. two <laughs> years ago. I know time's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I actually graduated Boston University with a degree in biochemistry, of all things. Um, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur meant back then. Um, but when I uh, graduated, couldn't find a job in my field. Um, I found That's it. That's unbelievable to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was probably my fault, too. I wasn't super passionate about it either. OK. <laughs> Again, getting bored. This is true <laughs> Um, and that's when I got a job with a nonprofit that worked with young entrepreneurs, helped them accelerate their businesses and, you know, get into markets and scale their businesses. Um, and that's when I f got introduced to entrepreneurship, you know, the power that business could have in changing the world and creating, um, you know, new products to change people's minds and things like that. Um, Enter this guy. How did, not how quite did, yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I just want to move it ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, that's when I decided I would bridge this newfound p passion for entrepreneurship um, with my love for Tanzania. And I decided to create a company that would help um, farmers out in Tanzania kind of pick themselves out of poverty. And I would use this company as a vehicle to do that. And then in 2013, enter Oni, where we meet in Hartford um, at Reset, um, another incubator there. And we were going through an accelerator program together. Um, and we just really hit it off from day yeah, one. He yeah. told me he likes grapes. Even though he likes red grapes, I like green grapes. <laughs> that was, that was our first Coffee, conversation. Coffee, grapes. <laughs> and then when does a happy life enter? When, that was again in 2012 when I came up with the idea for this company. Um, so you tell him this and you say what about this? I mean, he, so I came, I was building out a corporate social responsibility program for a startup in Hartford. Um, and he came in with the idea of a happy life. This was in around October of 2013. Um, and we just sat down and first he told me, okay, I'm going to start a coffee roasting company. And I just thought that's ridiculous. Like <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to rip it to shreds, right? Like we're going to talk it out. We're an incubator program for a social enterprise and startup businesses. So we had a lot of that, uh, intellectual battles and stuff like that. And he really just broke it down to me. He's like, this is not going to be your regular coffee roasting company. We're going to build it around happiness and just have coffee be a byproduct of that because it is the second highest traded commodity in the world. Um, because the 
greatest coffee in the world comes from the poorest farmers. It just, it's a perfect uh, industry to be disrupted. And he told me this and I was like, that actually makes sense. So I quit my job and in November I started with a happy life. So then what happens? The two of you get together, somehow you end up with a Kickstarter program, I'm fast forwarding a little bit, yep. for a happiness lab at the Grove. And we should say the Grove in New Haven is another incubator where mm. a lot of innovators and entrepreneurs are working Absolutely. for the next big hot thing. Yeah. Exactly. So what are you trying to build in New Haven that's kind of, kind of an outgrowth from a happy life? Yep, um, so for the past eight months we had been selling coffee through grocery stores, coffee shops, restaurants, offices. All the while wanting to give back to, to exactly. poverty stricken yep. areas. We, uh, you know, when we started the company we decided 100% of our net profits were going to go back to these farmers um, <clears throat> because we really wanted to take a stand and make sure, um, you know, we created a company that would play an inf influential role in ending poverty, you know, worldwide. Might not be in our lifetimes, but that's something we wanted to create. Where are you selling this coffee? Um, we're in over 70 counts um, across Connecticut, Boston, New York, including grocery stores. So and somewhere in Kentucky, too. And somewhere in Kentucky, <laughs> as well. All right, so you really got moving. How is it that people picked up on your idea and said, I want to buy that coffee? We made them pick up on it. Mm. How'd you do it? Knocked on a lot of doors, a lot of, a lot of cold calls. All over Connecticut. All Absolutely. over Connecticut, yeah. I, I just loaded up, Fashal, he, he roasts the coffee, um, and he would give me just cases, 12 bags in a case, and I would have about four cases in my back of my O2 Honda Accord, and I would just start in Windsor, to Hartford, to Stamford, to New Canaan, to Westport, up to Enfield, to Madison. I mean, we went all around from February, even to this day, driving around, giving them a bag of coffee, telling them why we started, and just hoping they really latch on, and a lot of them did. You're roasting the coffee where? I am in Wallingford. Um, my mom's a caterer, and so luckily I was able to make use of her kitchen and, um, you know, kept our co costs low, and we've been roasting in there. But you're importing the beans. We're using distributors right oh, now. okay, distributors. Yeah, who source the beans for us. All right, so we're selling coffee now uh -huh. in s at least 70 places yep. in Connecticut and somewhere in Kentucky. Somewhere in Kentucky. In Kentucky. <laughs> you want to sell more coffee. Exactly. If somebody sees this, how do they get a hold of you to say, I want your coffee? Um, they can visit our website, happylifecoffee.com. Um, there's a link to our Kickstarter there as well, um, which is going to help support the launch of our Happiness Lab. And they can come visit us at the Happiness Lab once we're open. All right, good segue. Happiness Lab, what is that? So the Happiness Lab is basically the world's first coffee shop and co-working space um, dedicated to creating happiness. It's going to be here in New Haven. Right here in New Haven, um, 756 Chapel Street. Um, in partnership with The Grove, like we mentioned. And what it really is, is gonna be not just a coffee shop, it's gonna be a social space where people can come, experiment with happiness, discuss what it means to them, and how we as a community, um, as a New Haven community, can create it and hopefully spread it outside New Haven. Oni, are we gonna build these all over the country? That's the plan. I mean, really, as Michelle said earlier, um, before we started taping, one thing is that <clears throat> happiness is not limited to Connecticut. Um, Thank I, heavens, because I travel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one thing, we want to be able to have this happy life, um, not only the coffee, but the atmosphere that we bring, the happiness attitude, follow you where we go. So we want to absolutely build as much as we can, but also keep it as organic as possible. Um, one thing about New Haven is that we, I mean, even our Kickstarter, there's an opportunity. Well, there was, it's sold out now, but to name your own drink and create your own coffee drink um, at the lab. We want to be as community oriented as possible. So a community house, how will this differ from all the coffee shops, you know, kind of springing up everywhere? And I'm yeah. not talking about, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, but mm. all these little independent guys. How are you different? So I think with the Happiness Lab, we looked at other coffee shops, other very, very good coffee shops, and we realized that community is simply a byproduct and the coffee shop themselves focuses mainly on the coffee. When we're saying you can come in and gra buy great specialty grade organic pour over coffee, but we really want you to come in there to build a community and we're building this coffee shop with that intent in mind. I don't think in this day and age that you can build a business and correct me if I'm wrong because you're the entrepreneurs here, but I think when you're building something, people want to see a give back piece, mm -hmm. which you are doing. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, um, but what we've seen, you know, a little too often is people kind of, you know, do have set a minimum standard for that. 
um, you know, to consider to be, you know, acceptable as a, you know, as a social company that, you know, gives back to their community. They're just giving it lip service, you exactly. mean, and they're not really... Exactly. It's a term we call greenwashing sometimes, um, mm -hmm. you know, make your company appear to be environmentally sound or, you know, a green company. Um, but we want to take that to the next level, set the new standard for, um, you know, environmentally and socially responsible companies. Um, as you can see, our bags are fully compostable. Um, all our waste at the coffee shop will be composted. Um, and like I had mentioned earlier, 100% of our profits will be going back to fight poverty. Did you design these? I did, yeah. You did. Uh, I'm not a designer. I just uh, found the necessity <laughs> and it's, figured it's, out how to do it. It's coming from your heart. It is, all yeah. Right, so as we wrap things up, both of you, give me your elevator speech as to why folks should get involved with a happy life. Well, I think for me and really why I caught onto this business and why I'm, I work so hard about it every day is that we're in a point where we are in, especially both of, both of us being 24, we've seen the, the world play out and, you know, 2008 with the crisis and a number of other things. And we're just not happy in, in the way that current systems are, right? And we're in a unique position where we want to call on our network, call on everyone watching, call on everyone involved to say, let's build a new, let's build a new dynamic, right? Let's, let's really push the threshold and create something in this world that hasn't been done before and let's really think big and try to be as crazy as possible. I mean, there's so many opportunities to disrupt and grow and really secure uh, a, just a better future for everyone. We want Happy Life to be the conduit for that. That's good. You're wrapping it up. Yeah, and building on that, um, you know, this company really started out of a need to find a way to combat poverty. Um, and to me, poverty is really a crime of negligence. Um, and so what we're trying to create with a happy life is an environment where people aren't neglected. You know, when you see your neighbor struggling, um, you know, you aren't afraid for your own self if you help them, if you're going to lose resources or something like that. We want to be, um, you know, create that environment where people feel safe to, you know, uplift other people and I'll be happy. Well, you're 24 years old. You're going to change the world. I love it. Oni Vichelle, thank you so much thank for you. being on and good luck. Thank, thank you, you so much. I made a trivia on pursuits when one this in. Who is this girl? I spent all night kissing and a bump is right here. Then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked if I'm as a wish and I find the piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Keep locked in the grocery store of the mind Just the same time I Skip right ahead in the last ride The harder we look, the less we can see Don't you know, you know, you know that you